Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Oh my goodness, this is an episode that you guys are going to love. I finally, after several months of back and forth and dealing with busy schedules, was able to get my dear friends, Jared and Elena Mitchell, onto the podcast. And it was such a fun conversation, such a funny, candid, open, and transparent conversation with these two amazing entrepreneurs. So Jared and Elena are husband and wife, and they have built two separate seven-figure businesses One is an e-commerce site, so they have a day spa. They decided that they wanted an additional stream of revenue. And so they started actually building an e-commerce site to sell their products online. Hello, we talk about that all the time in Spa Retail Rockstar. And they built that business, Skincare by Elena, into a seven-figure business selling products all across the country. Now, Then they decided after some feedback from their uh, regular customers that they wanted Elena to make her own skincare line because Elena's an esthetician. She's really into skincare. She'll share how her family has been in skincare and, and in the beauty industry for quite some time now. And she launched her skincare line, Elena Mitchell, which went into the seven figures in just over two years. So for those of you out there, I want you who love retail, who want an additional stream of revenue, who want really big things, I want you to use their story, listen to their story as inspiration for what is possible. If they can do it, you can do it. So dream big, my friends. Now, we've got all of their links below this uh, video. If we've got them in the show notes, be sure to check them out. Be sure to follow them. If you're going to be in San Jose in August, be sure to go check them out at the spa show there. And I'll go ahead now and stop rambling. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play that interview with Jared and Elena. All right, Jared and Elena Mitchell, welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm so glad to have you guys on here. Thank you. We're so ha- super happy to be here. To be here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this has been something kind of a long time coming. I know we met, and it, well, I, of course, I knew who Elena was because of the Skincare by Elena website, but we kind of connected after I closed down the Estheticians Connect Facebook group because you guys reached out, you guys were active members in there and said, hey, how can we help? And we just had this great conversation and and became fast friends after that. So I know I've been wanting to get you guys on the podcast ever since then after learning more about your business and, and what you are doing and what you're doing for the aesthetics community. So thank you for being here. Thanks yes. for having us. Yeah, we were super excited to connect with you and Jared actually initiated it. And he said that, you know, I think she's doing the best right now that anyone has done for spa marketing for, for businesses, for the spa world. And I got on and I agree. So thanks for what you're doing. Yeah. It's an honor to be here. I, I basically was trying to find the people that are giving real solid usable Mm -hmm. education to estheticians and spa owners, retail businesses, and that's how we found you. So we're stoked. Awesome. So on that conversation, on that phone call that we had, Elena, you were telling me that your family has actually been in the spa industry or in the beauty industry for quite some time. Is that right? For many years? That's that's right. Yes. My mom just sold her last uh, chain of hair salons. So she was... um, former real estate agent from Los Angeles and moved to a small town, Reading, and needed income. Uh, My dad was laying carpentry and floors at the time. And she thought, how do I make some money in this town? (laughs) You know, I I need to do something. And her good friend was a manicurist at the time. And she said, this town needs another beauty supply, not even a salon or spa, just a beauty supply I'll be your manicurist. I'll show you what to do. And that's how it started actually in the supply portion where I remember little gondolas of gallon jugs where the professionals could come in and refill their 
shampoo and conditioners for the back bar. And as the time, as time progressed, see, I'm like my age, that was almost, you know, 42, almost 45 years ago. That's how old I am. I'm just calculating <laughs> based on my age. <laughs> you know, you're in the right industry because you look amazing. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. I'm 55. Oh, uh, don't I look I'm good? 73. <laughs> exactly. You're 73. See, you totally get it. So she had started on that and um, just kept going as the industry changed and she would keep up and as a real entrepreneur and with a lot of hutzpah hustle, she, she, that's what she did. And then my dad came in as, you know, his knees were giving out and he took over, kind of did the bookkeeping side and inventory side. And they started working together, which my mom laughs. She's like, you guys remind me of me and Bob. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that kind of leads me into my next question is like, did you always know that you wanted to do something in the beauty industry and how did it, I mean, I guess you should also tell a little bit about what you and Jared do, like, cause you have multiple businesses. Yes. Yeah. We didn't start multiple businesses. We've been married. It'll be 15 years in June. So we're really excited to celebrate that. And we met in college. We were both marketing majors, though we didn't meet through our majors, but we ended up taking classes together after we were dating. Um, but yeah, I always knew I wanted to be in skincare. I never gravitated towards the hair side. I was always, you know, as my mom's stores, I went to the, to the makeup side. I would always talk with the makeup artists and I would learn about skincare. Um, when I had to sweep hair and clean the hair out of the shampoo bowls, I knew that that was not going to be my future job. I was like, <laughs> no, thank you. I don't really like this hair thing. Get me to the makeup counter and the skincare. So I didn't know what form that was going to take exactly. You know, I would wax my sister's unibrow and, you know, do all that stuff. But um, I, I love dermatology. Friends had acne. I wanted to hear about their appointments and what they were doing. And, oh, you're on Accutane. So, yeah, it's total love for the skincare and beauty industry in that way. And um, me and Jared met in college. And then uh, we got married at our college. We um, moved down to San Clemente here in Orange County, and he was working for electronics company, wireless electronics. You were in sales, right? Uh, yeah. Right? That was your title? <laughs> Back on that, like, yeah. oh, yeah, I remember that. That was interesting. You had to wear, like, a polo shirt every and, like, day. like, sit at a desk and not do whatever I wanted. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> We've had our really like, hey, let's open a spa. <laughs> yeah. So, and he was... He was in a band and they got signed to a major label. So it's a little bit of our journey. And then was the pod, iPod came out? Or? Yeah, that was right before the iPod came out, before um, things like Spotify existed. So it's a real awkward time in the music industry. Was, we didn't make it, but... They were on um, Interscope. Yeah. So. Uh, but we used the signing bonus and the spare time I it had... It wasn't a lot. I'm going to say that. <laughs> to, to start, um, it wasn't anything that crazy. Yeah. Just like, we started skincare by Elena.com and Elena's Day Spa. With well, that. Uh, well, you had your deck business and so you could do your band stuff. And I had my esthetician license and I had clients that I would see just for services. And I had a small retail space. Uh, and before that, I dabbled in some marketing with some med spas. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go on my own and do services. And the plan was that I was going to help my parents uh, franchise and grow their business their stores. Um, but that changed, the plan changed. And so I was doing services, Jared had the band and you had your deck business. Um, that was getting a little hard physically. We're not sure what was going to happen with the band and the real estate crash happened. You know, that was about what, 13 years ago, 12 years ago. And my rich clients, my well-to-do clients that were pulling up in, you know, their Porsches, came to me and said, yeah, I got to cut back on my services. And I thought, oh, oh no, this is going to really hurt my income. So me and Jared talked because I was thinking about this this morning. Um, and I remember we're like, what do we do? And Jared's idea was like, what if I get, make you a website? Cause we learned that in college back in the day <laughs> and you can make it like your catalog. Why not? You know, I've got spare time. Let me do that. 
I was like, sure, do it. So he made the website, went to Costco, got a brochure. <laughs> literally walked into Costco, like after eating. This like, is the pizza. most amazing origin story I've ever heard. Oh, oh it's crazy. There like, was no business plan. <laughs> Absolutely not. And Elena's literally was leasing a room at the time. And it was so funny because it was like Small. 70 square foot, which is probably generous. One of our clients, I'll never forget him, is an ex-NFL lineman. And his name is he Frank. And I diagonal. met him at the gym because I love, you know, lifting weights and all that. He's the nicest guy ever. Huge. I thought he was going to break my table. His feet touched one corner. Yeah. And, and she like, could, like, that. not even get behind his head to, like, like do the facial. I was like, Jared just, was like, like, how oh. do you get Frank up in there? And I was like, oh, we just wedge him in. <laughs> <laughs> He's very cozy. Wrapped up. Took uh, back, this was long ago enough that it was pretty much, there wasn't things like Shopify or Squarespace. and things E-commerce was, I don't even know if that was a term then. We would have had to drop like a no. hundred grand, which we didn't have at the time, to build this gnarly e-commerce custom cart. And so I had to learn how to build one on my own. And I figured out how to do it eventually from a flyer at Costco. <laughs> After he ate a hot dog. There is the origin. Oh my gosh. Let's see here by Elena. And but now, yeah. Yeah. 13 Call. years yeah. later, you guys yeah. have what? built two different seven figure businesses. Because you guys are being humble right now, but you know, talking about your Costco <laughs> origin story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll start at Costco. I love Costco. Right? I know I love Costco yeah, I too. The in the cart and they go never, crazy. never underestimate the power oh, of Costco. Costco for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so it we did not plan on an e-commerce journey at all. We had a little bit, we had some success and I was retaining customers and they started calling for more product and we were shipping out. He was coming in and doing shipping. And then, yeah, it just kind of kept, we said, let's do more. Let's see what else. Like maybe this could be a, a real legitimate business. Yeah, we had to convince the, the product clients because we focus still on higher end and harder to find uh, skincare product lines that try to protect their distribution and things like that, which has changed a lot recently with Amazon and all that. But um, yeah. we had to sort of convince them that the internet wasn't the devil, <laughs> you know, and that we could represent their products with integrity online. Um, and it so, took a lot, a lot of, a lot, a yeah. lot of convincing, a lot of conversations, a lot of stink eye as we walk through trade shows yeah. um, in the beginning. And it's funny, but times have changed since then. And now we laugh because they wish I was their only, you know, they wish I was the person and not all these other people that are doing what they're doing. <laughs> so when did you, so Skincare by Elena is the website, the e-commerce site that you guys sell all of your products, but you also launched your own line that's by the same name, right? Skincare by Elena? No, no. Skincarebyelena.com is a retail website. You can purchase my skincare brand that I created about, well, Jared and I weren't created together in the branding uh, about two and a half years ago, which is Elena Mitchell. So my first and last name. Okay. I knew it, I was looking at the, the, cause you had, you did like a CBD oil, which is the new like thing yeah. that everybody's talking about and did some other things. I just saw the Elena. So that I was thinking, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. We like to confuse people. No, not really. It just kind of worked out. You know, like Skinker by Elena, we have so many customers and it really made sense to, you know, launch the product there, the Elena Mitchell skincare line. We also have a Shopify website, elenamitchell.com. That's only Elena Mitchell products. So sometimes certain PR related events, we refer them to that website just because we, we don't want to confuse. But my customers from Skincare by Elena were asking about products and, you know, I want this eye cream or I want this and want that. And one of them said, why don't you just make something for me? I thought, that's not a bad idea. Okay. And so that's kind of how we got started in the brand. and. I loved, you know, I was like, yeah, I want to get into some formulas. That would be awesome. So uh, we always knew we wanted to start our own brand. It just wasn't quite clear what that was going to be. Yeah, I think the evolution for us thinking back was starting the spa business, which you had a full clientele pretty quick. Um, and this is like attracting new clientele back then. It was like money mailer or like <laughs> yes. mailings, like physical mailings. Yes. 
The money mailer. Like, I got gnarly. a lot of new clients from the money mailer. And like I had that website pumping and ranking number one in this and that, but it didn't do much for us at the time because people were just still yeah. kind of old school in that mentality. And so once we figured out how to sell physical products online uh, on a retail basis, we realized that we made more money in five minutes than she made doing an hour of facial, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and then t- like after we built that following, that business gets like 15,000 visitors a day right now on skincarebyland.com. So it's gotten very popular at the blog and all that. And then we realized, well, if we make our own product line and take all these products we've been making, uh, sorry, reselling over the last 10 years and pick our favorites and make a better version, we think of them, um, I think people would be stoked mm-hmm. and, um, and we'll make more margin, right? And so that's been kind of the uh, you know, evolution. I right. love this story so much. It's so inspirational because there is so much that you can do with an aesthetics degree. And I think that, and Jared, I'm saying women because mostly women are <laughs> in this industry, but women, we, we don't dream big enough. There's so much that you can do. Everyone's talking about, I want to be a six-figure esthetician. I'm like, really? why do you only want to be a six figure esthetician? You know, like let's go for seven figures. Let's dream big. Let's think about all the possibilities. I mean, this is a, a multi-billion dollar. Yeah. So there is enough for all of us to thrive. And when, when we see the examples of, you know, people like you that are just starting out in Costco after eating a hot dog, go (laughs) to seven figure businesses and your skincare line, you said went to seven figures after just two years. Yeah. We started trying to figure so there's so much possibility out there. So I love, thank you guys for being so open about this and, and sharing with everybody. So what is now that you've got, you know, these two businesses going, you've got a lot of kind of balls in the air, where do you spend most of your time and what do you feel most passionate about? Oh, that's a good question. We're still kind of like, I think, diving into that and sorting through who's doing what. We probably spend a lot of time right on marketing and um, of the Lena Mitchell brand. Uh, that's a lot to keep going. We just got hired an inventory manager and getting him fully uh, equipped there. So, and then getting ready to scale because if you are going to dream big, like you're saying, you need to have the infrastructure to grow. And that's what we're getting a lot of things in place so that we can grow. So then, you know, we go from seven to eight figures and just keep going. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for me, it's probably the digital marketing side, which is kind of a complete separate business doing that. And um, I'm not necessarily passionate about skincare. I'm I'm getting there. (laughs) You have beautiful skin. You're having fun with the CBD and he uses the products. Like, this works. I, right. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely for me, the digital marketing side and just the concept of, um, we have a real product line, which is exciting to me. there's a lot of skincare brands out there that are like straight from China, straight to Amazon and, and doing really well and have really gnarly harmful ingredients. And so for me, it's passionate because it's her. And and also, we know the ingredients are good, the products work, people like them. And marketing that online and figuring out how to position the products and the messaging um, is a lot of fun. So I know that every family faces different obstacles or challenges. I know I've shared with my listeners that, you know, Kyle's active duty military. We have a two-year-old that didn't sleep through the night till she was 14 months. There's all these different challenges Mm -hmm. that come up in your, in your personal life when you're trying to build a business. And I know you guys have kids and you're, you know, married. So you're working together and you have your personal relationship. Was there ever a time that you felt like, let's just throw in the towel. Like life can be a lot more simple or how do we you know, like you've had to have faced certain obstacles as you grow, but you're obviously still going. So how do you get through those? How do you keep going or keep the dream moving yeah, forward? I'm moving forward. Do you want to start, Jared? Um, no, why don't you? Well, you know, it is, I mean, there's so many times we wanted to just throw in the towel. I mean, it happens, you know, you might have, you have a negative month. Um, all these HR issues came up all of a sudden. Um, you know, as a mom, you know, we have two little ones. Well, I say little, I mean, Malachi's nine. 
Uh, he has special needs, high functioning autism, sensory processing. I can give you a list. Uh, Eli is just turned four. And so there was a big chunk of time, uh, probably the first three years of his life that I was super part time. And I wasn't always in the office and Jared had to really do a lot of the day-to-day things. And we had, I had to focus on what we, you know, for Malachi, what he needed because the first five years for a child is very important and extremely important with someone with autism, because I can, you, you have to, he has to have so many services and the social and all that. And now it's nice as we can sit back and, and take a deep breath because the work that we put in then we see it now and he's flourishing and often we'll hear from people, wow, I didn't even know, or I can't tell, but the blood, sweat, and tears, man, (laughs) that went into Malachi. Yeah. Malachi was like yours. He just didn't sleep. (laughs) He had acid reflux. I mean, now looking back, you know, oh, okay, well, this child had autism and sensory processing disorder, and this is like all part of it, but I had no idea. He's a baby. He's not going to tell me. Well, and your first baby too. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to, I, I feel like, okay, if we're going to have a second baby. I know how, like, I know certain things because Kyle and I were like, oh man, if they, cause Tia didn't sleep through the night for more than it was three hour stretch was the longest stretch that I got until she was 14 months. And she had cow's milk protein intolerance and reflux and all this stuff and had to be hospitalized, <sighs> but because no one knew what it was. Yes. But now it's like, if we see that, you know, Right. Yellow poop. We know like what it's going to be. And it's like, okay, (laughs) no dairy, no soy. Yes. You know, like, and we can move forwards. But the first baby, when that's happening, you have no idea. And you're obviously like, so I I think that all that, yes, you have different seasons in your life. Yes. You know, and there are certain times I feel like I'm able to contribute a lot more to my business right now than when she was a newborn. And so yeah, it sounds like you guys kind absolutely. Of and then working together for sure, we've had to create healthy boundaries for work and home, and we don't talk about work at home. And we, you know, try to if we're going to talk about personal things, we actually like today we're going to go to lunch, and we go and we talk about all of our personal stuff at lunch, and get out our phones and you know, calendar and this and that. And then we set meetings with each other. So to be respectful of each other's time, <laughs> you know, I just think for the listeners out there, imagine running your, your spa business or your retail business and having your wife or husband there. We're very much still in love 15 years in June and we very much still like each other. So having to turn that off and go to work and be business partners. And then maybe if we do lunch, turn that off <laughs> and get yeah. personal and then turn it back on and then go home at night and yeah turn it back off and you know wine helps that helps yeah. and uh, you know but it's it's a real challenge especially when you throw things in like cash flow and um you know just all these business challenges hr employees you know um it, it can get really challenging at times yeah. hr is not our favorite <laughs> in case you're yeah. picking that up no HR. Yeah. okay all right you know <laughs> I like to say, so before I had Taya, I always said that being an entrepreneur is the greatest lesson in personal development that I've ever had. And because there's so, you learn so much about yourself, about can I operate outside of my comfort zone? Can I show up on social media even if I don't feel like it? Can I, you know, address this negative comment or this positive comment? You know, if you're, there's this, thing of you're just constantly, it's always there. So you're always working on yourself. Then I had a baby and then I said, okay, having a parent is the greatest yeah. lesson in personal yeah. um, <laughs> Closely followed by my second baby, my business. But what have you yeah. learned about who you are as people going through this journey, this entrepreneurial journey? Because I think for Elena, I know it's in your blood. You know, you grew up around it. I don't know about your background, Jared. Did your, were your parents entrepreneurs or is it just something you just always had that kind of free spirit of? Mm, yeah, my father, my grandfather was an entrepreneur. I guess you could say he was a dentist. He owned his own practice. My father did for a while. Um, but for the most of his life, he was employed. And so I grew up with this um, stigma that I was going to end up behind a desk. And when I had that first um, electronics job, <laughs> um, I had the 
it was a great company and I had the most awesome bosses and coworkers you could wish for. And I still would go into work and feel like I was literally getting locked into jail. <laughs> That's the only way I could describe it. And I couldn't even identify it because this was going to be my life. It was like predetermined. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, well, we, kind of entrepreneurs are such a rare, I mean, you're from school, you're taught like how to be an employee, how to get a yeah. safe Exactly. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. And entrepreneurs, it's like, well, I made so much money this month and then next month I didn't or what, you know, it's this whole up and down and oh no, it's like the constantly solving problems. It's the opposite of this safe, secure, steady path. But there, like my brother has been an entrepreneur from, I don't think he's ever had one job that he didn't create himself. And That's awesome. Yeah. And, and my dad was an entrepreneur and it's, so I always feel like it's in my blood too, even though I'm much more of a steady, you know, steady, right. I like my nice steady job, but then yes. once I became an entrepreneur, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, you're either love it and you're there for the ride or and I, I hear people who have said to us, I don't know how you do that. I need my paycheck. I need to know what's coming. I need that. And I say, that's great. You do that. Go ahead. <laughs> but it is, it is not for all of us. Like I can't do that and you can't do this. So we're all made differently to do different things. Yeah. I, I don't think I could ever go back. And work, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, Jared does consulting like he, for uh, different businesses and, he, and they hire him for consulting jobs and, you know, they usually want to hire him for, you know, employee. nine to five as an employee. And he's like, yeah, I know me. I'm not going to be an employee. Like oh, I, wow. I will consult for you all day long. <laughs> But I can't, you know, commit to that. And this is what we're doing. And I enjoy consulting because Jared is a really good teacher and CEO. He's really good execution and meetings and visionary. Uh, that's a real big strong point. I'd say he's the gas. I'm the break. Where I analyze <laughs> and he goes, and then I'm like, wait. So, but yeah, we definitely. It helps having we get each other. We get how business and entrepreneurialism, and yeah, we we're on the same page and that also helps in our marriage and our business. It's very rare that we don't see eye to eye, maybe different strategies, but our goals are always the same. That's really well done. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it helps though. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I guess, I mean, I think you kind of just answered my next question, but what advice would you give to estheticians who maybe have that entrepreneurial bug or maybe want to do something different than the regular, you know, the regular safe path. How would you, what advice, like, I guess, what advice would you give back to yourself? Because that's kind of like when you were very first starting out, that's where these estheticians are. Like they look at you, they look at what you've accomplished and they say, that's possible. I want that. How can I do that? Yes. Well, I, I think for the esthetician, you know, right now you're, you know, maybe you're happy where you're at. Maybe you want more. And I would say there's always more that you can be doing and don't be afraid to research and, you know, continue following Daniela, listen and get plugged in and networking. I think that is probably a number one tool that a lot of people underestimate. Women are usually better at networking, but I think uh, networking, reaching out as much as you can, Google searching to find that area. If you want to grow your retail business, you know, there's a lot out there. Um, There's a lot in digital products that you can learn, but I would say you're never going to start unless you start. So just start. <laughs> and that's something versus Action procrastinators. Action clarity. Yeah. Action and clarity. Take one step forward. Perfection. Yeah. That's why I'm here without my makeup on because that's fine. All right. I'll be with my makeup on. Let's do this, you know, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there and to start. I think you're, you're not going to get ahead by playing it safe either, you mm-hmm. know, and business is the intelligent management of risk. So there is going to be some risk and you have to manage that, but get started, follow on podcasts. I've been digging on my podcasts. I've been listening to different ones. I go from business down to parenting to what have you. Um, but get started, just get started, find something, network, go for it. You know, my very first, um, I guess business that hired me when I started my business with Skin Medica. Oh, yeah. Cool. I was, and it was all because of my network. And yes. I had stayed connected. And one of the doctors that I was working with, they 
he introduced me to the CEO of Allergan and said, this woman did this in my business and gave off some numbers. And I told him that I was starting in a business to help estheticians increase retail sales. And he's like, I would love to hire you. And from there, it was this like cascading thing of if you've worked with Skin Medica, then SkinCeuticals calls, then IS Clinical calls, then all, you know, all these different brands. And it all can be traced back to maintaining a healthy network mm-hmm. of people because this industry is very small. It is. The beauty yeah. industry is, is very, very small. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we, we know a lot of the brand owners and yes, it, you don't, and I'd say also a side tip is don't burn bridges. Like handle yourself professionally. You don't ever want to burn a bridge. Even if, you know, that person's wronged you, try to, you know, maintain what you can and keep your integrity because yeah, it, it, it will come back for sure. If you think that conversation won't, it will. We've, we've had people have left here, good terms, bad terms. And then the owner of, you know, X, Y, and Z brand calls us and says, so-and-so is looking for a job here. And I go, well, that's interesting, you know, <laughs> and like, would you know, and, and so it's like, huh. And, and then also we have an employee who's with a really big brand because she was communication with us was great. And, you know, she wanted to do X, Y, and Z. And we were like, great, well, we can't do this, but maybe we can help you because you're great and we love you. And she's plugged in another company doing really well. And, you know, it's just a great, great circle relationship when you keep that and you don't, you never know what's going to happen. So don't burn bridges. Very good. Anything else you want to add, Jared? Oh, uh... I, something I'm really passionate about because, um, you know, we do know we've, we've had experience on all sides of the equation with the day spa and then with the retail business and now the brand. And over the years, we've met a lot of these brand owner, owners and most of them are awesome, you know, and occasionally we'll come across some that have just really rubbed me the wrong way. And <laughs> I want, I want listeners to know, like a lot of them do view the women here as being content with a small dream. So um, they literally like compartmentalize a lot of these women and men spa owners to people who just want their little box, their thing here, their customers. They don't want to expand. And that's what makes these brand owners love this business. What I love with what you do, Daniela, is you encourage all of these listeners to dream big. That's what we did. And there is no reason why you as a listener cannot dream as big as we have. There's no reason why you can't have your own brand. There's no reason why you can't open up more rooms and more mm-hmm. locations. Um, so my encouragement to you is to, um, you know, I guess, uh, go against that ideology um, and to dream as big as possible and know that you can do it. And we're living proof. Sure. Very true. Yep. Awesome. So why don't you share, we're going to link up all your um, websites and all that kind of stuff in the show notes, but where can people find you if they want to stay connected and, and stay inspired with what you yeah, guys are doing? Social media, Instagram, skincare by Elena.com, Elena, A-L-A-N-A. Excuse <laughs> me, skincare by Elena is my name on uh, IG and I'm on there pretty frequently. And let's see, we have Facebook, same thing, skincare by Elena. I don't do much on Twitter. Those are kind of the two that I'm you know, the most on in social media, obviously the website, you can sign up there for blog posts, uh, our blog, what are we at? 10, 15,000 visitors a day for the blog. Mm. Um, there's some really good blog posts there if you're looking for information. Um, you know, newsletter, we don't really have a newsletter. I say the blog is kind of the way emails sign up as we send out emails, depending on yeah. what you're you know, if you're a customer or if you want to, I have a lot of professionals actually. It's, it's interesting because I think of my business as consumer, but there's a lot of professionals that are on my email list and seeing what I'm doing and, and what we're doing in the blog posts. So those are great ways to stay connected. Yeah. And if you want to meet face to face, we're speaking at face and body in San Jose. Yes. On August 26th at noon. That is my time slot. I don't know what room or anything like that, (laughs) but I know I'll be there at noon somewhere in that building. And uh, (laughs) our topic will be e-commerce and online. How to use the internet to grow your business. Mm -hmm. So our goal is just to empower you out there who are spot owners and um, retail store owners and this and that to take it to the next level. Very good. Well, we'll be sure to link all of that up in the show notes. And 
Thank you guys so much for your time. And as always, you guys, if you want to keep this conversation going, be sure to head over to the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group. We've got extra show notes, extra goodies, extra Facebook lives to talk about our episodes over in there. So we'll see you there. Thank you all.